Oh, hi guys, what are you doing in here? Come on. So first thing I'm going to do is try and get this top radiator hose off. So just going to loosen the uh, Jubilee clip or clamp. And then, now I'm not too bothered if I do any damage to this hose getting it off. Because I do have a new hose to go on both the top and the bottom. And that's the pipe off. So that's the radiator hoses off. So it has two pipes that come off the bottom of the radiator and go straight to the gearbox to help with cooling. So I've already disconnected those, there's one there, you can just see all at the very bottom there, you can see it's disconnected. And there's one here on the other side, which you can see is disconnected as well. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to see from there, but down the side of the radiator, on both sides, there's two, what work out to be the equivalent of 11mm bolts. So, I just want to take those out. The radiator is disconnected completely, it's unbolted. In theory, that should just lift out from the front of the car. Let's just move you around a little bit and we'll see if I can get this to lift out from the front of the car. Yep. Two of these bolts have washers on and two don't. Now I'm assuming that they'll all need to have washers but at some point they've lost them. So we'll replace those washers when we'll put the fan back on. I'm hoping this is just going to pull straight off. And as you can see, that's the radiator's out, the fan's off, the fan belt's next, then this pulley, and then we can get to the water pump. I think that pulley just, we might be able to just slide that off. Will it, will it slide off? Yes, it will. So we'll get that pulley out. Get that belt off. Or is it the next thing can come out? is the water pump. The water pump bolts have been soaked in WD-40 for a little while. So in theory, it should just be a case of hitting this with this rubber knocking stick. See if we can loosen that off and then that should pop off in the hand. There we go. Clean the water, lemon to the water out there. So what I'm going to do now is take this off. I had a look online, I had a look in the manual, and I can't actually find an easy way to take it off on its own other than removing it while it's still attached to the bracket. So if you can see down there, there's a bolt hole just there. Uh, I've taken that one out because that was a, a really awkward one to get to, and there's also a bolt hole around the other side which I'll show you here now which is just down there if you can see my fingers the bolt in there and all that's left to take off now is that bolt there and there's a bolt there and there's a bolt there
Of course, these two cables here, one's the earth clamp to go to the battery, and the other one's the earth clamp that goes from the bodywork of the car to the aircon unit. Now, if I've done it right, that whole unit should just lift off of there. Those and yeah, it is definitely heavy. There you are, that's the old top radiator hose off, and then there's just a thermostat housing to take off. Thermostat bolts out, so the hammer should come off. There we are. Judging by the looks of that, I'm thinking that pretty much would be the original thermostat housing from 1968. Well, the original thermostat, I should say, from 1968. But it doesn't matter because we've got a new one. So, a little bit of cleaning up to do, and we're ready to put the new parts back into the car. You see, I've blocked off the thermostat housing and the water pump housing with uh, just a bit of uh, paper tissue so that no bits fall into it. And now, a small amount of clean up. I'm going to clean obviously this gasket off from around the thermostat housing and the same from around that water pump housing as well. But just the hard part is making sure the gasket stays in place. So, I'm going to use a tiny amount of the uh, of sealant, just a tiny amount though, you don't need much, it's really, literally just to hold the gasket in place when it uh, when it goes on, so just a light covering all the way around the pump. Does come with instructions, but obviously you don't read the instructions, you just ignore them altogether. Now as you might be able to see on here, the gasket on the four holes, you've got three of the holes that are pretty much straight round and one that's shaped. And that does follow the pattern on the water pump, so this particular gasket goes on in that direction, so it mounts up with all the holes and everything matches and lines up properly. So it's simply a case of putting it on, it will stick straight away to the sealant or instant gasket or whatever you use. Now you just need a touch of the stuff, just a touch, you don't need a lot. And the same with the gasket again. Now also at your water pump, when you go to actually put the water pump on, as you can see on this one, there's a hole at the bottom there. And that's when your water pump gives up and dies and your, your coolant will start pouring out there when the water pump dies. Now that bit goes to the bottom. So if that's on the bottom, then it goes on that way around with the odd shaped flange at the top of the uh, at the top of the engine. So we'll put a couple of bolts through. Actually, I'll put the one in the side there. And I'll put one in that side. And I'll take out the paper I have in to protect any rubbish or flaky bits falling in there and it's simply a case of lining it all up making sure it goes in put the bolts in the hole start tightening that up by hand and the same on the other side because I want to make sure it goes in level. Get it down a little bit. If you 
have the manual for the car the specs and the torque settings for this will be in there but you want to go as tight as you can just make sure there's a perfect seal around it without actually getting to the point where you're going to shear something off so that then is the water pump fitted it spins freely, there's no noise everything's on there just cover that in there like that now once again a little bit of this does go an awful long way now I'll we'll just get this on ready to go as you can see it's just made out of a, a cereal packet when I've done it but you can use any thin cardboard to do it so we'll just get a little bit around here as well simply a case of putting your gasket over the top the gasket on and then holding that in place roll that down into there and then take your bolts again and start feeding the bolts in ready to go in. And then that's all in there. And if you have a look down there, you can see the thermostat's perfectly in place. And that's pretty much ready to go. So that's the thermostat uh, housing and the new thermostat back in. finally getting the fan to go in with the pulley so if you're doing this at home and you're going to change your radiator and the hoses and the thermostat don't forget when you take everything apart in order to make it easy to put it in don't do it the way I did it put the fan on first with the pulley and then the radiator in I've also filled the radiator. I've just filled it with water at the moment, just to make sure nothing's leaking. And as yet, nothing appears to be leaking. So once I get it fired up, what I'll do is I'll drain the water out and I'll put the proper mix of coolant in. And that's the fan in. With a nice quiet water pump now. You can actually hear it moving water around inside.